Hello there. Um, biology one, twenty twenty. Um, multiple choice. I'm going to cover question one to question twenty. Then I'll do the other half in the next video. So, question one: All living organisms absorb glucose. I mean, a living organism absorbs glucose, releases energy in its cells, and then passes out carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Which characteristics of the of living things are described in the statement above you have to look at the absorbing glucose this is eating it's like nutrition okay it's, it's some kind of feeding releases energy that's respiration in its cells and then passes out carbon dioxide which is a waste product which is excretion so my answer goes to a number two three cells or three cell structures are listed below cell wall cytoplasm and three nucleus which structures are found in both palisade and liver cells palisade are plant cells and these are of course animal cells so cell wall is automatically off um the 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 the, the, the list so our answer there is two and three cytoplasm and nucleus question three um the diagram below shows a piece of viscous tubing containing a starch suspension held in a beaker of pure water saliva is added to the starch and the experiment was left for two hours that's our saliva i don't know where they got this saliva man i don't even know if it's dog saliva worm saliva or chicken saliva but things saliva has got amylase in it after at the beginning and two hours later look at the level of of the solution here and compare to the before and then uh yeah so the question follows what does this experiment show saliva breaks down starch that's its function so the first one saliva is a so is a solvent for starch no saliva passes through viscous tubing no uh, number d starch is soluble no starch is actually insoluble in water it's insoluble and then this effect of osmosis is more perfect or more efficient when the particles are very small okay it's more efficient in solutions not really suspensions so the moment the starch was broken down by saliva to form small sugars um then the effect of osmosis took uh, took flight so our answer here is c can starch can be changed to sugar so this answer is, is a little bit at another level they're not really directly telling you it's not really directly answering what's here but it's a correct one the fact that starch was changed to sugar osmosis took place therefore a water entered the more concentrated solution and then volume of water here increased number four uh, which of the following is true about enzymes they are sugars no they're actually most of them if anything they are protein in nature then they are affected by ph and then the last one they are specific therefore each enzyme catalyzes one reaction this is the the, the the property of being specific our answer is a number five uh, chemical tests were carried out on a food sample in solution the table below shows the results um burette reagent is for protein this is for lipids this is for starch iodine is brown the result brown meaning no starch was there it's supposed to be a dark blue or blue black as some as some books who put it here this is a uh these are white droplets okay which result into or make this emulsion meaning lipids are present purple color from blue to purple means pre proteins are present so proteins and lipids were present but starch was absent we get to the table which what did the food sample contain starch was absent because it remained brown but the two were present our answer there is b question six ignore these pencil uh, scribblings therefore question six the table below shows the um the mass of some nutrients found in 100 grams of four different foods bread um beans bread cheese eggs which food would best prevent rickets and scurvy you're talking about nutrients but at the same time you're talking about uh, conditions brought about by lack or too much of certain nutrients therefore dietary diseases um or illnesses therefore we've got rickets brought about by poor bone formation which is mostly promoted by lack of calcium vitamin d and the like then scurvy lack of vitamin c okay so 
we're looking for vitamin D for this one, then C. So we go directly here. This one, vitamin C is a lot. So beans for vitamin C. Then 1.5 is the highest in vitamin D. So eggs for uh, rickets. Then this one for scurvy. So scurvy, we're going to go for beans. Beans for scurvy, eggs for vitamin D. Our answer here for number six is D. Number seven, I uh, remember biology 2020, uh, paper one is what we're doing right now so seven which of the following people needs the most energy daily you can even see here directly manual worker even though it says manual like you're a manual laborer and then you're male males have got high uh, metabolism rates they have a higher best of metabolic rate so you're male and you do hard work therefore you need more of energy giving foods number eight which mineral nutrient is required by plants for proper formation of roots both of these actually are needed by plants so much but the one that is needed so much so much because phosphorus is also involved in the formation of uh, atp you know adenos adenosine triphosphate okay apart from that phosphorus is involved in the formation of proteins that have got phosphorus some proteins have got sulfur and and the like so potassium uh is the one that is needed most for roots but even phosphorus is needed nitrogen this is involved in protein formation uh, whether fibrous or globular then magnesium in the formation of um, uh, chlorophyll but the answer here is d and number nine the diagram below shows an arrangement of apparatus for an experiment on photosynthesis left in the sunlight for five solid hours the leaf was then tested for starch look at the arrangement first sodium hydro hydroxide pellets uh, sunlight in there's this part where the leaf is not exposed to light therefore this one the leaf is covered again in a conical flask which has got sodium uh, hydroxide pellets uh, sodium hydroxide absorbs uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere so here light is going to be reaching the leaf and then our uh, water will be reaching the leaf but carbon dioxide will be removed even up to the to up to maybe 90 95 percent of co2 be removed so starch won't be formed photosynthesis won't take place this point won't have air and won't have light water will be present so photosynthesis will not really co be completed this one will have starch so we expect this part which is our x here to be to test present and here the starch will be absent how do you test for starch you add iodine which is brown in color so after the experiment what were the colors of the regions x y z just a moment let's see if there was any testing here the leaf was te then tested for starch okay they tested it so the colors have to remain uh have to yeah my answer here was d because this part here will be blue black then brown and brown these will remain brown the two parts will remain brown because of the starch i mean the iodine solution which was added if there was no testing for starch would have said maybe the parts would have become white because we didn't add any iodine but they have said the leaf was tested for starch so the color that will remain in these regions after testing will be brown which is the color for iodine solution number 10 the dental formula of a certain uh, carnivore is that and then what is the total number of teeth in the lower jaw of this carnivore dental formulas only show half the number of each jaw in an organism so the numerators in these kind of fractions appearing like fractions the numerators therefore these three one one two represent half the number on the upper jaw and then the denominators represent half the number of teeth in the lower jaw so for you to find the total number of teeth for example as they're asking in the lower jaw you have to add the the, the the numbers of the types of teeth in the lower jaw then multiply by two because these just represent half the number of teeth so i got seven when i added three plus one plus two plus one giving me seven then i multiply by two because seven is just half the number of teeth in the lower jaw of this given carnival so when i multiply by two gives me 14 my answer is 14. number 11 we cross to number 11 um the diagram below shows part of the alimentary canal so we've got the liver right there the the esophagus the stomach the the the, the pancreas then the duodenum the gallbladder okay and then the ducts uh which two structures produce substances involved in the digestion of lipids there's pancreatic lipase which is part of pancreatic juice so three is one of them then there's gallbladder i mean bile which comes from the liver 
uh, the liver produces bile from the destruction of all dried blood cells and other remains and bile has got sodium salts which are actually basic in nature which emulsify lipids and bring about physical digestion physical breakdown of lipids after the physical digestion has occurred then the lipids from the pancreas acts on the lipids to simply break them down chemically so the gallbladder is just a storage the liver is the one that produces the bile so it's four and three the answer here is c for four and three uh question 12 the diagram below shows structure of a gill these are gill filaments this these are gill records like spines or spikes then this is our gill bar okay for attachment of the gill filaments on the gill filaments we find what we call gill lamellae which are the uh, respiratory sites the actual sites where gaseous exchange takes place it's like the alveoli in the lungs they are the actual structures in the lung they are the functional units of the lung it's like talking about the nephrons of the kidney okay so what are the functions of part labeled x and y x for gaseous exchange then y for removal of solid particles they're good they're called gill rakers they rake or remove uh, uh, solid particles from the water as it passes from the mouth to the gills question 13 which substances are produced in muscles by aerobic and anaerobic respiration keyword muscles okay meaning it's an animal therefore aerobic respiration whether it's in plants or in animals produces carbon dioxide and water but when it comes to anaerobic respiration when it comes to anaerobic respiration um, in plants, ethanol is produced. In animals, lactic acid is produced. So our answer here is B. Uh, question 14. Below is a list of signs and symptoms of a disease. It's cholera, vomiting, nausea, abdominal pain, dehydration, severe diarrhea. You've been, you know, attacked by micro uh, cholera. Okay, so uh, cholera is a disease. B. 15 uh, the diagram shows a cross section through the root section um, which tissue transports water and mineral salts the different water and mineral salts it's B which is our xylem okay in the roots the xylem is this central part here okay um, the next question here is that the diagram below shows types of blood cells We've got cell P, cell Q, and these structures, they're not really cells, they're platelets. So you just have to identify them even if you've been told. So the question follows, which of these cells produces antibodies, engulfs bacteria, and are involved in blood clotting? Uh, these are fragments of cells. They are generated from special cells in the bone marrow. They are pinches uh, of certain cells in the bone marrow. Uh, these, this is a lymphocyte. There are two types. There are two types of lymphocytes. We've got B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes produce antibodies and, and um, T lymphocytes uh, get to act more like suicide bombers. They attach themselves to the foreign particle and they together die, you know. So this one engulfs bacteria. So engulfing is P, then involved in blood clotting, that's uh, R, which is our, these are our platelets. Then finally, your answer there is B be um our lymphocytes are made in the lymphatic system phagocytes are made from uh, bone marrow um seven the diagram below shows or the diagram shows the longitudinal section through a mammalian heart we've got the vena cava the pulmonary artery the aorta then the pulmonary vein so you can even tell this muscle is bigger that's the left side of the heart it's bigger to pump blood to the rest of the body at high pressure so which labeled which labeled blood vessel carry deoxygenated blood it's three and four the right side of the heart carries deoxygenated blood it pumps blood to the lungs for the blood to attain or gain o2 and release co2 then this side carries oxygenated blood from the lungs via this vessel then to the rest of the body our answer here is d the diagram shows part of the excretory system in mammals this is the renal system um yeah so the renal system so you check out this is our iota this is our vena cava usually the iota is written in front and the renal arteries are, writ are written on top then the renal veins are usually written below there therefore the iota is 
comes out is kind of highlighted in these diagrams. So what are the numbered structures? This is your kidney, ureter, bladder, and urethra. So our answer here is C. Our answer there is C. Kidney, ureter, urinary bladder, and urethra. They can even just call it bladder, but there are quite a number of bladder. Gall bladder and other small, small bladders in our bodies. So when you say urinary, it becomes more specific. Question 19. Where... Where is the hormone insulin produced and what is its site of action? What are its target cells? The pancreas produces insulin. Apart from insulin, it also produces glucagon. The two hormones work antagonistic to each other. They do opposite functions. So uh, it targets mostly liver cells and even muscles, but especially liver cells. Um, insulin helps absorption and metabolism of glucose, therefore conversion of glucose to glycogen in the muscles and in the liver question 20 which will be our last question for this time for this part a conditioned reflex differs from a spinal reflex because a conditioned reflex has been modified by past experience it is learned it's like riding a bicycle driving a car surfing skateboarding you know balancing on a rope those are conditioned reflexes Okay, uh, but spinal reflexes are uh, those simple reflexes like withdrawing from a hot object, something just pricked you. Apart from spinal reflexes, we also have what we call cranial reflexes, like sneezing, coughing, blinking. Cranial reflexes occur within the head region, while its spinal reflexes occur just within the spine. If anything, I, 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 processing information in the spinal cord is like a very lower level of thinking so if you look at it critically you discover that we actually are capable of thinking through our spines but if the activity that you're about to do is complex the spine is not enough the spinal cord is not enough you have to involve higher uh, uh, higher levels or higher, higher maybe more complicated circuits for this time i end and then i'll see you in the next video um to simply complete this paper. Bye-bye for now.